Cool. All right. Hello, everyone. The earphones are still, but that's fine. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let's try this again. Okay. okay. Hi, everyone. For today's session, we're going to have uh, something special for you. It's animation for game design by Ala Playful. Uh, so Ala and his son Albert over here uh, shall be giving the session for us today. And Ala, the floor is quite literally yours because this is our first in-person session. So yeah. Okay. Um, I'll show you one on the other workshop. That's kind of okay. There's only like one person. Sorry, I'm in. Uh, I'll show you a little bit later. Uh, the setup is a little bit on us, too, because the first time we do a workshop in person, and we're going to stream at the same time. But with that being said, I'll show you a little bit on the other um, this is Alaa Playfield. I'm a character animator or animation director. And we also have a workshop about animation for game design. As a head of the live audience, we will see you in the same workshop. 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 Can you switch to English? English. Okay. Nothing much. Do you have anything in Arabic? Yes. Do you have anything in Arabic? Okay. Okay. Sorry. So today's workshop uh, will, be, will be about uh, animation for game design. Uh, the outline of the workshop had uh, on The first part is going to discuss briefly uh, character design, uh, specifically the, the design of characters in relation uh, to the gameplay, to the animation. And uh, we're going to go through the process of designing a simple character by simplifying the form into basic shapes. The second part will be about uh, action interaction, uh, how, uh, what are the basic uh, motions of the character, uh, how to animate character actions in a readable fashion, and we'll do that by studying exaggeration and silhouettes. Um, we'll go over some uh, animation principles like sparse sketch and smear, uh, and action intensities. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're just going to share a screen. Oh, we shouldn't have that. Ooh, it's okay. Okay. No, no, no. Khalia on screen. Ahsan. Is it the same one? No, 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 no. So? Screen. Okay. Ahsan. Oops. Yeah. Uh, but then uh, a part about anticipation and designing enemy designs. Uh, we sheets about style and budgeting for animation. Uh, but most of the emphasis is uh, on the action interaction part. So, okay. Okay. So, um, most of the so Pikir softwares that are available for free, um, and there are some paid but still accessible software that you can use uh, for animations. Um, and if anyone wants to follow along the workshop, you can also use paper. Free paper on and Sasha, and like pencils, pens, kill she. Um, okay, so part one, character design. Uh, it's not always the job of the animator to design characters but it's crucial for the animator to understand how the design of the character influences the gameplay and its animation. So for example, you have a game like, I think it up, yeah, so. One, best on this edge in a shway. You can put it to the bottom of the top. Keith. Uh, click on the, I don't know, click on the. Hey, uh, though? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, I'm gonna put it in the middle. Yes, please, merci. No, no, we can't see it. No, we can't see it. Oh, okay. Okay. So, for example, um, uh, a game like Dead Cells, which is a hack and slash game, uh, has a specific design for the character with the anatomy of it. If you're playing a game like Parappa the Rapper, which is more of a a, a dog and a groovy rhythm game, uh, Red may coin uh, a game like Shapes and Beats. Shapes and Beats, play Shapes and Beats. It's a good rhythm game, it's not bullet hand. It has a playable character as a square, so your job is very easy as an animator. So, 
Um, each gameplay is different and so is its playable characters. So how do we create a character? You start simple with a circle. So you observe the circle. Observe the circle. <laughs> Depending on how the circle moves, it can be a ball or a sphere. And one of the principles of animation is easing in and easing out. And you can see how the, uh, the spacing of the frames affects the smoothness of the motion. And this is a principle that you'll constantly use when you're animating characters. A circle can also be a walking head with legs. For the sake of this workshop, we're going to be using real life references to design our character. And the most, uh, the epitome of references available in nature is the chicken, which we'll be using for reference. So this is the abstraction uh, graph. So this is how characters are designed. We use a, a process of abstraction. We start with a reference and we slowly remove details to reach a final design. For this workshop, our protagonist will be a chicken living in a farm haunted by undead scarecrows. So, uh, so some design elements uh, like the comb and the beak inspire the design of the chicken and the limbs on either side of the body help us animate with more ease and flexibility. I think that if I'm going to So, all right. Um, when designing a character, always make sure that the silhouettes are readable. That's why the limbs are on either side of the body. And if the body, if the limbs are close, then silhouette-wise, we can't understand what's the, what's the shape, what's the characteristic of the motion. Of the pose. Uh, those are sprites from the human game. But you can see how you notice the sprites of the character animation and it's very readable pose each step of the way. And this is what you want to strive for when you're animating characters. The frames don't appear in a millisecond, but overall it affects the readability of the of the animation. So part two, action and interaction. This is where we we'll start animating the character. Um, and before you get into the animation part of the video game, you need to ask yourself, what's the purpose of animation in a video game? I say, so the function of video game animation is to communicate what's happening in the game. Is it something you can control? Is it, is it an object that's moving? Can it cause damage? Is it a static set? Is it a static object in the environment? The idle animations of those objects allow you to understand these different details, Akid, with respect to the design come in. So you ask yourself, what are the main actions? It could be an idle animation, walk or jump. So for our character, we start with an idle animation. This allows us to understand and know when a character is idle, it means the character is breathing. It means you can control the character. Not always if you're a square, but you know, for this sake, a chicken moves. Since we're talking within the context of a 2D platformer, our character needs a run cycle to go from left to right. Um, uh, so some details like the bounciness of the comb uh, allow us to feel some weight to the character. It gives it more personality and more recognizable trait. Uh, so as I'm animating the run cycle, it becomes too stiff when the limbs, uh, like the right arm and leg, if they're moving in sync, it feels too stiff. So offsetting the limbs allows the run cycle to feel more organic head if it's a casual run. For a run, uh, so in this case, we need a faster run cycle because the chicken is pissed off from the undead scarecrows. <laughs> Hello. Uh, whenever you're animating a character, the process you'd want to go through is by starting simple. So in a be a circle, you animate the circle, and then you add the details, like the head, the, uh, the eyes, beak, et cetera. Um, and I keep this presentation is at 12 frames per second. In a video game, if it's 60 or above, so the action is going to be smoother. And uh, smears are very helpful to understand the line of action. The end of the run cycle here is barely six frames, but the line of action the smears use 
allows you to understand the speed and the motion of it. Our فكرة إذا حد عنده أسئلة نخلينا نقفل. Okay. Okay. إذا في أسئلة ما عندنا مشكل بس إذا في لك كتلة أسئلة تبونه للقفل. Okay. So, مين هون لعب زلدة؟ Okay. So. It doesn't matter. لحظة بآخر بآخر زلدة صار فيه نو. Okay. So let's let's talk about. Can she? Okay. Well, be linked to the لحظة. أيها كانت ال 2D top view. بعرف شوي. Links awakening يمكن. Anyways. Sometimes you need to jump attraction. I don't know what to do. Okay? So I like think your character needs a jump because chickens can jump. Okay? So... It's easy as that. Sometimes. I'm going to be zero, Kevin. So with this jump action, it's fine, but the issue is it doesn't work well if the character is running and needs to jump. So instead, the legs will shuffle. And exactly, when you add it to a run cycle, they start to feel more organic. What about them? Keep in mind, you're animating each action separately. So when they play together, they need to feel fluid and intact. Uh, they need to feel seamless. So, um, and I added the action lines uh, for clarity. Uh, and Nasushi, it allows the action to feel smoother. Uh, those are all the smallest sprites for the jump action. So at the beginning, when the chicken jumps and lands, you have another principle of animation, which is the stretch. And the stretch emphasizes the speed at which the chicken is jumping. Um, and as it lands, you have a squished frame, which is also part of the squash and stretch um, principle. And those details emphasize uh, the speed, the weight at which the, uh, the character is landing on the ground. Come in, the calm of the character, um, it, it's a secondary animation that follows the chicken and emphasizes the, the motion. Come in. So basically have fun. <laughs> so silhouettes, this is what I meant by having clear and readable silhouettes. At each step of the action, we can understand the character's form. We can recognize the character without seeing the details. And we can, we can, under, like we can understand the character each step of the way. Heck, at any point, is the red environment, or um, there was like a black and white scene. Um, we can still recognize the character we're studying. Uh, so this is an example of the stretch. It is uh, the exaggerated motion and momentum of a subject as it stretches um, and as it kills a rabbit. <laughs> the squash is the literal squishing of the, of the subject, of the subject to exaggerate its impact on landing. So those, this is how you utilize squash and stretch. squash and stretch it's like it's a seasoning, it's not the entire dish. So the entire animation can't be squash and stretch. It sure as hell can't be smears. As a Mahadalai Dandara, the movement is quite interesting. The motion doesn't have to be linear. You can break gravity, you can utilize the environment to your advantage. Plus, if you're designing a platform, and that's where the fun happens. Oh no. <laughs> An undead scarecrow appears. <laughs> How will the character react? Before we punch the scarecrow, let's talk about smears. So, um, تعرفوا لما توقعوا عصير توت بالجلية؟ Yeah, this is smears. Okay, <laughs> so smears is the literal smearing of the line of action. Uh, of a rapid movement indicate its speed. Um, and the reason why smears are important is because without them, the actions might not be readable. They're incredibly fast. So for example, in Hollow Knight, the sword swing is two to three frames. 
you wouldn't be able to notice it without smears. Smears literally show you the entire action and the staff action. Um, in Hades, the same principle applies. The sword swing, again, is maximum five frames. Most of it is on the easing out. So the smears allow you to register where the sword is swinging. And this is very important for designing the gameplay so you know where you're landing the blows. Uh, smears and stretches can be used together. It can register teleportation actions. It can allow us to show um, uh, uh, and I like to show Khalas fast movements. Okay, the character moves really fast. This is a shadow character that snatches the character's art. Um, and the more exaggerated and the more exaggerated the action, the more smears you use. Um, so don't be afraid to use smears to exaggerate extreme actions with a lot of awesomeness. Um, okay, so how about we can introduce the character's actions in different intensities. So we can have the chicken punch and notice how the chicken pulls its, its arm back. Hala, it's supposed to be a wing, but let's just say that the chicken has a fist. Um, another principle of animation is called anticipation. And when the chicken winds its fist backwards, Ashraf, that could be the course. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yes. So the fist winds back. So uh, the fist winds back. It's called anticipation. It allows you to see in what the character is about to form an action. And this is incredibly necessary when designing enemy characters. And again, with the punch, uh, the body body parts that will come again gives personality to the character and not the punch at them. Um, oh, very careful. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, okay. So, hello. When it comes to the responsiveness of the uh, of the character action, uh, Zakar, one of those actions, they're done using button prompts, and you might not always want anticipation uh, poses. So, for, if you want something more responsive, a simple punch with three frames gets the job done. Uh, and this feels more responsive mm -hmm. if you want, for two punches, what about? It gets the job done easy. So whenever you're animating actions, you can make it better. You can make it better. The secret of the dish is not in its seasonings, but in its sweetness. <laughs> Punch. Ah, okay. Yeah, so we're punching the undead scarecrow. Um, and I want you to notice a few things. The flashing attack isn't that necessary. You can indicate damage in other forms, but utilizing effects allows the player to see, you know, okay, actually damage was done, and the flipping of the hat gives more personality to the to the damage happening. Okay. The mega punch. <laughs> okay. We'll see it in action, I promise. So notice how the character pulls its fist before doing the punch. In exaggerated actions, obviously anticipation is needed unless you don't want to add that, which is fine. And make a hold. We're not afraid of exaggerating the smear. So if it's a major action, as a tabak beer, you can utilize seasoning that All right. And the effects of the impact allows us, allows us to read it. okay, a lot of damage has been made. Um and by the way, those are the actual frames. So the fist goes back, one, two, and then boom. So the smears allow you to see the entire action without actually placing the fist. Then if you have to animate the fist frame by frame, it won't be fast enough. Okay, so a mega punch obviously is useless without landing it on an enemy. So a mega punch is useless without landing it on an enemy. Oh, oh. Okay, Tal. Mind if you hold on, but I'm just gonna walk it up the fence. Oh yeah. So, um. Ah, خلاص. Okay, the notes are good enough. Um, so a few things. So it's fine to to have the character move really fast. 
Um, and again, I'm using the hack as a, as a trait to add personality to the enemy as it's taking damage. Um, when I was doing this frame, I animated the tree on the thief. I animated the tree moving sideways because it was too distracting. So I just kept the tree static as is. You don't have to overdo exaggerated motions very much. Okay. Okay. Um, and most actions in games would be invisible without those principles. Marhaba. Okay, so part three, anticipation. Um, so Hadithan anticipation poses the level. Um, but now we're, I'm gonna talk about anticipation poses uh, when it comes to designing enemy attacks. Um, and it's crucial to design uh, reactive gameplay. So anticipation and anticipation pose is the preparation pose before a character does an action. So if a character is about to jump, if you need to jump, you need to bend and then jump forward. So this is what anticipation action is for, allows you to do the action and it feels more natural. So if you haven't played Rayman Legends, play Rayman, Rayman Legends, it has a very satisfying anticipation pose and the punch winding is very satisfying to watch. This also applies to enemies and environmental hazards, etc. Um, this is from a previous workshop. Um, this is how the, uh, the active gameplay is introduced. So, Flowey is an evil flower from a previous uh, workshop. And you notice how the flower winds backwards before shooting its spikes. It winds back, and then boom. Is that now, this is anticipation. So I'll just notice it one more time. The flower is dancing, and then it moves backwards before actually shooting its, its spikes. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's again, it's Hone, the, the project, uh, the line of action is part of Smears. Uh, action. So Hone, the flower is doing its idle dance and then pulls back, that's the anticipation before actually shooting. Then you come in, the flower aims at you. So this is part of anticipation. Okay, and all this communication, the action in action lines. All right, so those are the sprites for the anticipation attack. So the flower stands, pulls backwards, aims at spikes, anticipation, and then line of action for the effects. And then when the impact, it pushes itself backwards. Silhouettes. Now? Recoil. Recoil, exactly. So silhouettes are important because they clarify the, the action pillow. Okay, um, and anticipation attacks are also necessary for uh, designing boss fights. Yes, it is. No, it's um, it's a baby with two cheeks. Okay. Sure. It's attacking a plumber. Yes. 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 <laughs> it's just it's really close cheeks that <laughs> it's clear it up about. <laughs> It's a boss fight, okay? <laughs> it's just be diarrhea and the boss is refusing to call. Well, I bring diarrhea. <laughs> He's a plumber. Where is the plumber? No, I can't have diarrhea. I can't have plumber. I say to show on the recording. Okay, so let's go. So anticipation poses not only apply in 2D games, but also in 3D, okay? So, um, Sekiro, I'll be honest, I played like three boss fights and that was good enough for Ellie. Okay. <laughs> I didn't even touch the rest of the Souls games. This was as far as I went. Okay. Uh, but the monkey dude, Guardian Shaman, Angel, Guardian Ape, 
okay? Like again, pulls backwards even for a few moments to, to perform the attack. And this is this is how the, the this is how reactive gameplay works. This is how boss fights work. Anytime a boss attacks, unless you're playing Fury, there's some kind of anticipation before you eat damage. And if there's no anticipation, the developers are looking loud on. Example of anticipation from Cuphead. It's a very good game with very good animations. Also, check it out. Check everything. Hala, we're nearing the end of this lovely presentation. Part four is going to be about style and marriage. I know. Style and elegance. So, video game animation is a labor of, is a labor intensive craft. So is most animation in general. So figuring out a proper style that works within your budget limits is incredibly important. So when you understand, so understanding your limits implies you understand what's important to animate first. So a key to animating all of those cool combo actions for your character is fun. But before you animate all of the peripheral animations, make sure you nail the important actions, have like a list of, of actions the character does and then animate. Um, you figure out what can be removed, what frames can be recycled, and which visual style is appropriate for the theme scale that you have. Mm -hmm. Remember, we started with a circle, and we can end it with a circle, hence the circle of life. Maktab the workshop is just how it is. Exactly. Limiting your art style can fit the development teams in a way to establish a unique style. Okay, so what are, those are some good references. Yes, so Downfall is a game that came out in 2018. It has a very limited color palette, very limited visual style. Yeah. Um, and it's very limited in the amount of sprites and character frames that it uses. It's a very smart and well made game. Uh, there are only three primary actions that I've counted for the main character is a Akhtar. I might have missed them. But all the character does is walk, jump, shoot, and it's a fully fledged game. Also, it looks gorgeous. Um, Gato Robot was published by Devolver Digital. Uh, it's also a fantastically done game. It's not easy to do pixel art. That's, I don't want to get this misconception across, but a highly limited color palette and, and, a, and a smart use of character sprites. Now, again, a fully fledged game without an incredible amount of resources. The developers are just very smart about the resources that they do have. Um, ah, and no backgrounds, just elements for the platform in itself. Yes, just shapes and beats. I've mentioned this before, just play shapes and beats. It's an incredibly good example. Did it's a, hmm? No, I wish. <laughs> oh man, I wish. I played, I, I like, felt the letter my then. Uh, the game uses just simplified um, geometric shapes and designs. The color palette is just um, like magenta, cyan, and black. Um, it's hyper stylized. It uses geometry all the time in all of its designs. Um, and the game does a good job of setting itself up to use assets in a way to design unique uh, set pieces to my uh, you're also square, so you don't need to animate much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in, in, in player one. It's the small blue square. Yes. Right on the other side. Okay. We have to animate everything else. Well, yeah, but you don't have to make animate the main character. Okay, just Zahta Horn, a very important reason. Those are more games that have excellent animation. Khasatan Skullgirl and Lethal League. They're super stylized, very good references. Cuphead is a very traditional game in its approach. Dandara already hit it's a very good, unique take on platforming. There's a bunch more, but those are the ones that are included. The Halla, Mahasta, the workshop, but play Doom 2016 edition <laughs> for the soundtrack. <laughs> um, and those are additional sources. Um, we can share the PowerPoint for the links. Uh, so principles of animation, uh, a couple of presentations uh, from Skullgirls um, and Hollow Knight and Epic Sheet, like uh, the Harik 
for animation in the Arab world. Uh, shukran kthir. I'm not sponsored by anything. Kuntum ma'ana. Now? Merci. If anyone has questions, uh, I guess we can start with that. Uh, uh, so Mutaharik is a is a, an animation platform from the Alam Al Arabic. It's a, it's a website and uh, a fully functioning platform that covers articles, reviews, interviews, artificial custom animation in the Middle East and the North African region. Um, and yeah, it's as uh, simple as that. Can people go to learn? To learn animation? Yeah, do they showcase their work to learn? Well, Mutaharik showcases works in general. Yeah, the Kilshi animators can at least they showcase that. Learning animation, not yet. Um, yeah, yeah, not yet. Thank you. Um, so you already have some questions. So I, don't, okay. I don't know if the chat can hear me. Uh, you have a question. Uh, does the amount of movement frames have to do with how smooth the action is, or can it still be smooth with few frames? Everybody here. Okay. Okay. Um, the motion. Okay. So there's two parts to this answer. When you have more frames in animation. It's a smoother action by default. However, if you utilize uh, squash, uh, stretch, smearing, if you utilize uh, secondary animations to emphasize the action, you can have a really smooth looking action in very little amounts of frames. So using your principles in a smart way allows you to have a smooth action. Now that's a simple answer. Cool. There is another question, which is how do we all smear your frames, lines, and pictures? Can you just read the question? How do we all smear your frames, lines, and pictures? Uh, last I saw you can showcase that. Oh, Danny Flynn? Yeah, okay. Is that going to share screen? Oh, it's I'm already shared. Screen. Yeah, yeah, it's your Photoshop. Okay, okay. So, so, long story. And of three, I have of this, right? Yes. Uh, this should be good. Okay. So, guys, I'm going to shift here in my word. I'll just say this. Okay. So, let's say. No. Well, measure time. Measure time. It's not a different extreme, no? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So, let's say you have. Like a really fast ball that just jumped in. So this is your ball and hide the line of action there. A smear is quite literally So this is a smear. It could be lines, it could be a shape. Hatta a smear could look something like this. Is a line of action here. It could be a shape. Have to. A cube. Can the smear be like an after image? So you know when you like when when you like punch really quickly like yeah. like. Punches behind you. Ah, so speed 
Um, but I, I think it counts as a single anomaly. If you have like multiple bunches or a bar, it can. Uh, Cuphead uses it, and it's a traditional. Uh, yeah, you can When? But the difference is that when has an echo or a line of action, it doesn't emphasize the speed. So it doesn't look fast. But the smears that they do, they start to look at the object or the fist. But if you can see what the last, you can see what the lower side of the character is going to see what the echo is going to do. But it does, it, it emphasizes the action. But it's not for speed. Uh, a smear is a technical term. A technical term is a smear. It's an echo. Uh, but the fact that a smear is in a little motion blur. Well, you know, the motion blur, but the main umbrella, they use an echo effect to do the same end result. Um, but it. حسب كيف بتستعملها بي بي سلاس الأكو كتير بعاد عن بعض. هو بكون بالمباراة. يا كلمة هيك ما كبرت نسمي. أسف. آه. يا. you can you see the chat؟ خلينا نشوف. yeah you have a question um that uh, as far as what programs you would recommend for digital animation I know you showed a few at the beginning. Uh, Okay, so uh, programs are recommend. Uh, programs, Saraha programs, Hasab, Ticket Tickets, I mean, enjoy, but some programs, yeah, they're like to, to make strikes. Uh, I can't use the hand. Krita is good for digital painting. Yeah, Krita. Krita. It's the one that we recommended. Is it? Yeah. Mm. Okay. okay. Yeah, hala Kirita, Kirita, I've used the Android version too. Ana Benesvel Ele Photoshop is good. Uh, Adobe Animate is also good. Any any tool that allows you to export sprites yeah. should be good. Uh Bash Tiran and Samuel A Sprite with promotion. Uh Clip Studio can have animation is good. Uh but again, key programs to can even the animation within the program. Um, oh, I, I would like to say sorry. Yeah. Uh, and if you're using Krita for animation, you're going to need to add a plugin to be able to export as a sprite sheet, meaning every little sprite next to each other for an animation. So we can keep that in mind. Krita. Okay, is there a yeah, th 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 there's there's a few more questions. There's um, what's your approach when animating hair, and how would you try to achieve a flowy effect? Hair. Hair. Yes. Uh, okay. So hair is considered a secondary animation, which means um. It's like fire, but not exactly like a fire is less predictable. So, uh, a hair actually, hmm, how can I explain it? Not very severe, but, um, okay. Do you even animate hair with like someone's original hair? Hello. Actually, hair is you put the animation, unless I'm family 3D, that I'm like family. Maybe simulation. I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, man, the, and the thing is, and you know, the best way, okay, the best way I can answer this question is you videotape hair moving and you animate according to the reference. Like, head, I send technically, let's say you have like a head not to and like land it here. Like, let's say the head is here. So, the shark. So the shark is going to the line of action. And then when the hair is going to go like this. 
and then the ras nigra angel sharp angel okay i'm done with some ras and jay you know you know it's it's a secondary animation i'm dealing with the motion of the ras um and then once it lands This is a very nice presentation. <laughs> It's just bija bi do bahado aw bimal shar downwards. Here him. But say eh, for lal shar uh, honestly references is the way to go. La like, no this is how you get the most information. Ah la sa fi hada mami da isma. Yeah. So so. What's the other name? Sure. Can you talk? I don't ask this. No? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Um, guys, okay. can anyone else not hear? Let us know if any of you can't hear uh, right now. Okay, same. I don't know. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Oh okay it's I can hear Sasha here take this one it's okay Dash I'm second night this sorry Okay um procreate has a much yarn and be tazabu feel and grouping frames ma baad yazabu shway Imagine how someone would go through I don't know okay blah blah I get some questions here Coding animation. I mean, hajari, but eh, I've never coded. Okay, if you have a question. Okay. انت فهمك اعاده ايه اه اوكي 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 سو سو so basically uh, the the question was uh hi the question was if you are creating an, an character that's walking um is the character that's walking something that you have to animate oh i have to put it in Dang, that sounds wrong. Can you disregard anything I just said? Okay. Uh, so basically, if the character is walking, do you have to animate the character leaving, or do you animate the character just like moving in place? So, this is the question ish. Ish. Okay. So repeat the question. Yes. Yes. Go for it. Absolutely. Okay. Turn the camera. Fantastic. It's when the walking thing is happening. Okay, we can export that. What file? Yeah, you you export the spreadsheet. Yeah. So basically, yeah. yes. So the question is, you just go for like one frame, like up, one frame, like down, or should you like animate the entire thing of the 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 the, cycle, the walk cycle? So you do make the walk cycle, but you have to make sure that the walk cycle is walking in place. Okay. So let's say you have one frame where the character is standing, another one where the first leg is raised, then raised a bit more, then put in the front, then put down, and then you do the same thing with the second leg. Uh, usually we recommend something between like six to eight frames per action. So the action could be a punch, it could be a walk, it could be a jump, whatever it is, don't put too much, like too many frames into it because it's usually like a very short thing. And then you export this, you know, and then you export this as like each picture individually. And then you grab all of these pictures and you play them what about. And then for the character to move, uh, this is where the physics of the game engine comes in. So you know, uh, the, the developers are the ones that move the thing forward, backwards, make it die. The artists are the ones that make the character 
exist and Sasha wants to add something so Sasha. I, I just want to add a small thing uh for most of them are like six to eight frames but attack animations should not be that long an attack animation needs to be quick you, you should have anticipation but when you're playing as a when you're making your player character you don't want the, the player to wait until it attacks you want it to feel like it's an inst instantaneous thing even though there's a tiny bit of anticipation for it mm. Yeah, absolutely. And considering that we are currently creating, uh, what's it called, like a platformer game? Oh, this is fun. Okay, so <laughs> considering that we're playing, we're creating a platforming uh, game. Usually, you want very quick and snappy uh, interactions with whatever is happening. So you know, let's say you're running and you want to jump off the edge. You don't want to run off the edge and then be like, okay, let's jump. You know, you just want to yeah. be like, cue. You know, you just want to fly off. And it's the same thing with the punching and the attacking, just like Sasha said. You know, you have a character in front of you and you want to like stop them. You have to do it quickly. You know, you can't just like. I'm gonna get you a sandwich. It's okay. Uh, so you you can't uh you know you can't like get yourself ready to punch, unless again it's like th there's always the exception of what if I want to make a game like this? That's totally fine. You can always do whatever you want, but it needs to work in the entire game design field basically. But that's like a different thing. Cool. Okay. Um... Okay. Um, also, one more question for the walking and running animation. Is it fine if I don't do bopping or would it feel too unrealistic? Uh, depending on the gameplay that you want. If it's a very stiff character, maybe, but even if it's a stiff character, it's unnatural for a human or, or most creatures with limbs to walk without bopping. It's an un and it, physics wise, it doesn't work. The limbs need to go at specific angles, so mathematically, it doesn't work without the bopping. And if it's running, it's even worse. Like, you, know, you need to push off the ground so that you can run forward. Um, you can try. Uh, if it works, then, then that's good. But in, to my knowledge, it feels very unrealistic. Per second. Um, hmm? Okay. So, the question is, the how many frames per second uh, for the action? Like figuring out how many frames. Is it number of frames or how many frames I'm being labo? Okay, okay. Ah, by standard, it's 60 frames per second. But Sasha, Fishy, because you have frame rate. Okay, so so for movies, it's 25 or 24. Um, but this is for movies. So, oh, sorry. <laughs> ah, Mazbut. Uh, okay. Yes, please. Sir. Okay. So generally, when you're animating for a game, it's a bit different than animating for 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 a movie or or or, uh, or anything that you're not controlling. Well, the reason for this is anything that you're watching usually is something that needs to be moved in a certain way. Okay. So let's say, for example, I am animating a cutscene, and in the cutscene, my character is going to be jumping off a ledge and falling and 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 doing things. Okay. Uh, if I am doing all of these frame by frame, then this is where it goes for 20, 25, 60 frames, whatever you want to draw. But you're drawing every one of these frames. Usually in games, the difference is you are animating the actions themselves and not the way that the game plays. Okay. So let's say you move your character forward. Uh, let's say that the cycle for movement is like eight frames, masalan, and this eight frames is basically just the legs tapping in front of each other. In Anokari, masalan, mother, we made a game and uh, mushrooms. I love mushrooms, so I'm always going to reference it. Uh, I think the character, the, the movement was six frames, something of the sort. Yeah, it was something between six to eight frames, but the game itself uh, was running at somewhere between like 60 and 100 frames per second. But the thing that was running at this speed was not the animation. It was the 
physics engine of the actual game. Okay, so the the let's say I wanted to click on a button to get the character to move, but I only clicked. Okay, and I clicked for one sixtieth of a second. And if my game is running at sixty frames a second, this means my character moved one frame forward, something of the sort. Okay, hala. If I am uh, moving my character, you know, basically the animation that is happening inside the game is not exclusive to the animation that you are drawing. Okay. So if in a, if a character is moving forward, what you are drawing is the movement, which the movement cycle itself could be eight frames per second, and these eight frames uh, are being played at a certain interval. Yani, let's say when you're yes, exactly in the sixty frames per second. Okay, and the game doesn't need to run. Yeah, hundred percent exactly. So the frames that you are drawing are not the speed that the game is going to move at, and this was a problem with the old flash games. So do you guys remember when we used to play on mini clip and uh, what was it the Y Y something games I forgot what it was called. But so, no, do you remember which one I'm talking about? There something yeah yeah. So, no, there are a ton of websites where you could play flash games on. And the thing is, you know, the faster the computers became, the faster the games got. And the reason for this was, you know, the computer's processing speed was faster. So this caused the game speed to actually increase and thus increase the difficulty of the game. So this is the thing with the frames per second. And if you're animating. For a certain number of frames, yes, exactly. The sixty, the the FPS that the game runs at is how quickly the game refreshes. It's not about how quickly you are animating your frames. Does this kind of make sense? Okay, I'll try to repeat. Um, you have your character. Your character is moving. Okay, the way that you animated your character is to move in. Uh, you have. An X number of frames that you want to do in eight seconds, and and sorry, in one second. Okay, yani in one second, I want my character to do the full walking animation, which means and no put his leg forward and then put the other leg forward and then. Yes, exactly. The frame, the first frame, the second frame, the the same movement. Yes, exactly. Hundred percent. So basically, you, let's say in no in in a game where the character only goes like one two one two because they're always walking. That's two frames of walking. Okay. But if you actually played these two walking frames at 60 frames per second, they're gonna look like a Tom and Jerry cartoon where it's like, doo -doo -doo -doo, and then they just like run away. And we don't do this in games because in games, when you see someone walking, they're actually walking. Okay, but this walk depends on real time, not on the frames per second. The frames per second concept depends on how fast the game refreshes. So when a game is lagging, this is when the frames per second of the machine's speed is going down. It's not about the animations, um, how, how smooth the animation is. Let's say, okay, how smooth it is depends on on uh, the the uh, a mixture of the physics engine itself and the kind of character, the the kind of characteristics that you put into your character or into your world or whatever. Um, can I give them the punch example as as the punch as an example for us, the one that you animated? Uh, okay, so basically, in one of the games that we're making, uh, we had a character. Uh, when they wanted to punch the person in front of them, uh, what they did is they, you know, you clicked on punch, and then it like ran up to them. I'm sorry, and then it punched them, and then it went back. Okay, but the animation was a bit too basic, so we kind of changed it, and it goes up to them, it winds up, and then it punches them with full force with their entire body, and then it goes back. Yeah, hundred percent. Thank you. I'm sorry, Albert. But, but basically, the, this thing, it wasn't a total of 60 frames. It was like, I don't know, 10, 12 frames, something of the sort, which included the pullback and the punch forward. But the pullback and the punch forward mixed with the speed at which you ran at the enemy and punched them and ran back was what gave the thing life. Well, this, the, the, the fact you know, I was able to move my character from here to here without going like, tup, 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 Even less, yeah, yeah. The, the the frames were fit into pulling my hand back and punching. Okay, well, the pulling my hand back and punching was probably like twelve frames or something. Masalan, eight frames, four frames, whatever it is. Um, but this thing, yeah, you know, I didn't. I did it in a limited time. Okay, but. Hmm. Yes, exactly. So the one frame plays for a longer time. Uh, relative to the frames per second, the frame forget forget the word frames per second. Think of refresh rate. Okay, so the refresh rate is how quickly your computer refreshes, and this is the thing that gives it the frames per second. Okay, so so you just have to focus on making the the animation feel smooth, 
and then you exactly me me 100 percent exactly yes does this answer your question yes. other questions yours uh doesn't gris have a bopping animation have you seen her yes lava was nessel Ah, okay. Yeah, I said, Oh, tell Well, there is one question that people always ask, and they're asking to ask, What's your favorite color? They ask it to all the instructors. Shaul Kon. Laulu. حسب حسب ال ما هي هيدي لكل ووركشوب يلو يلو اه بس مش ال مش الفوسفوري اللي بياخد لك 2% على الاورنج اوكي يس اي ايه ايه يعني بين بين هول الاثنين طيب هاي Yeah. Like mustard yellow, yes. Metal yeah. mustard. Okay, yeah. All right. So uh, thank you everyone for attending. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being online and joining us. Uh, we'll see you soon. Oh, let us know how this session was on Discord. You know, as a, you liked it, as a, you didn't like it. So we should do more like hybrid sessions. Huh? <laughs> you're, you're helping. Yeah, exactly. You, you were like the... The prodigy is a redback or something of the sort. Anyway, thank you guys. Uh, we'll see you soon. Ooh, uh, take care.